cleat, cleat, ugh. why is that so hard to say? Cleat, cute, cleat, cute, cleat, cute, cleat, cute. Say it ten times fast, cleat, cute. Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay, and today I'm here with part two of my February wrap up for 2024. I read a total of 14 books for this month, so without further ado, let us get started. The first book I'm going to talk about is The Narrow by Kate Alice Marshall, and I gave this a four out of five stars. No one who has fallen into the narrow behind Atwood School has ever survived, except for one, a girl named Delphine who has never been the same since. She now has to live in an isolated, sanitized building as a single drop of unfiltered water can kill her. Six years later, Eden, her old roommate, is asked to move into this sanitized building to be her companion. As they spend more time together, Eden discovers the secrets that Delphine is hiding and what actually happened to her that night at the Narrow. Although the pacing was very slow in this book, I was very intrigued by the ghost story. I am almost always a fan of the creepy boarding school setting, so I did really enjoy that aspect of the book. I was very invested in trying to figure out the mystery behind the drowning girl and how it related to Delphine. Eden was a character that you couldn't help but root for. My heart honestly broke for her every time she talked about her difficult home life. The relationship between Eden and her brother was so complicated and I just wanted to protect her at all costs. I do think at times that the abusive relationships in this were slightly glossed over and excuses were made for them that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I think that the friendships were probably one of my favorite parts of this story. I think that Veronica, Zoya, and Ruth were so supportive of Eden and everything that she was going through. You could really tell that these four girls truly cared for one another and just wanted what was best for them. I will say that I liked the sapphic romance between Delphine and Eden. The ending completely broke my heart, but I understand why it needed to happen that way, but overall I did really enjoy this. I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars. Next I have Every Duke Has His Day by Suzanne Enoch, and I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. This follows Michael Bloomley, who is the Duke of Laurentin. He much prefers science over the company of other people. When he quite literally runs into Elizabeth and her poodle at the park one day, he hopes that he will never have to see them again. Elizabeth's suitor does not get along with her dog and so he hires a dog napper to get rid of his problem and take Galahad away. Little does this dog napper know that Elizabeth and Michael accidentally swapped dogs that day at Hyde Park and they were actually planning on switching back the following day. Michael reluctantly allows Elizabeth to help him get his dog back before his aunt comes back from her trip to collect him and it's the story of that. This was a cute read, but I don't think that it was anything particularly memorable in my opinion. This is told in multiple point of views. We get Elizabeth or Bitsy's point of view, Michael's, as well as Jimmy Blythe, the dog napper, which I definitely think did help push the story along. I did like Bitsy and Michael as main characters. They have an opposite attract slow burn romance that I think was very sweet. I did think that their chemistry was very well done. I think that they balanced each other out very well. This is a grumpy sunshine pairing, which I always love, so I did really enjoy this. If you're not into big over-the-top spice charts, this book is probably for you. There was the occasional kiss and that's about it. So if low spice is your thing, then maybe check this one out. I really liked Bitsy and her quick wit. I love how she put Michael in his place when it was needed. Also, big fan of the romance between Jimmy and his next door neighbor, Sally. I personally think that the redemption arc that Jimmy went on was so great and I really loved that aspect of the story as well. Peter, Bitsy's suitor, was a character that you couldn't help love to hate. I loved watching all of his plans go completely wrong for him. Overall, this was a fun read, but like I said, nothing memorable, so 3.5 out of 5 stars. The next book that I have is Magic Mutant Nightmare Girl by Erin Grammer, and I gave this a 1 star. I was not a fan of this. 
at all. This follows Holly Rhodes, who loves Harajuku fashion. She finds comfort in it after the death of both of her parents. One night, her best friend's psychic grandmother gives her some advice to be careful while going home through the parks of San Francisco. She finds herself face to face with some unfriendly mutants, and after a struggle, she wakes up the next day with blue blood and superhuman strength. In the search of a cure, she teams up with secret agent Michael Barron and his team of nerds. This could have been a really cool concept, but I was so bored while reading. It took me from the beginning of December all the way to the middle of February to finish this book because I just couldn't care less. It honestly didn't feel like anything was happening in this book. I felt like I was going around in circles the entire time. I just never felt like I had a grasp on this story. I don't think that there was any world building in it at all, and the characters were all very one-dimensional in my opinion. I really hated Holly. I think that she was the most annoying, insufferable character. She was so self-centered and obsessed with her fashion. Like, no matter what was going on, it always led back to some kind of comment about her fashion. Literally focus on, I don't know, like surviving this this whole thing. The amount of times it talked about her dresses getting dirty, like I just, I don't care. You're literally getting attacked. Maybe, maybe the dirt isn't that big of a deal. There was also just no chemistry whatsoever between her and Michael Brannon, and anytime she was with him, she just spent the entire time speculating on his sexuality and his relationship between his partner Nunez, but She's also part of the LGBTQIA plus community, so you would think that she would not be speculating on people because she probably was getting that treatment before. I also called who the villain was pretty much as soon as they were introduced to the story, which was very disappointing. This just wasn't for me. I gave it a one star. It might be for you, so I mean, pick it up if you want, but I will not recommend this to anybody. The next book I have is The Whispering Dead by Darcy Coates, and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. This follows Kira, who finds herself running through the woods without knowing where she is going. She finds herself in the town of Blighty, where a pastor named Agaj gives her refuge. After realizing she has a case of amnesia, Kira decides to figure out who she is and what she is running from. Along the way, she discovers that she has the ability to see restless souls wandering around the cemetery. With the help of of Mason, the doctor's intern, and a shopkeeper named Zoe. Kira tries to solve the murder of a young girl in the 1800s, and it's the story of that. This was an okay read, but there seemed to be a lot of plot holes and unanswered questions. I was not the biggest fan of the amnesia plotline, especially because we never figured out who Kira actually is or what she's running from. It honestly just kind of seemed pointless by the end of the book to have this amnesia plotline, but we are left on a cliffhanger where which I'm assuming is to lead us into the next part of the book series, which hopefully things will be answered, but I can't particularly say that I'm going to go out of my way to pick up the next book. I also didn't really understand how Kira is apparently running from somebody, but then she's gallivanting around town like it's nothing at all hours of the day. It just didn't make sense to me. The saving grace of this book was definitely Daisy the cat and probably Zoe. I really liked Zoe. She was just so over the top and I found it hilarious. I definitely liked learning more about her personality. I also don't think that this book should be labeled as a horror. It should be a mystery because I just did not find it to have any horror elements whatsoever. Maybe I just have a stronger, like, horror palette than some people, but it's a mystery. It's not a horror. But overall, it was okay. I gave it a 3 out of 5 stars. The next book that I have is One True Love, so I gave this a 5 out of 5 star. It's by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I feel like any Taylor Jenkins Reid book, I give 5 out of 5 stars, so we're not surprised here. This follows Emma Blair, who ends up marrying her high school sweetheart, Jesse. On their first wedding anniversary, Jesse boards a helicopter for work, which ends up going down and is never seen again. Emma is obviously heartbroken, but she ends up finding happiness again in an old friend named Sam. They end up getting engaged, and that is when 
Emma receives a phone call saying that Jesse's helicopter was found and he is ready to pick up where they left off. Now Emma needs to decide who she's going to spend the rest of her life with. Jesse, the high school sweetheart she loved once upon a time, or her newfound love, Sam. Like I said, I love a Taylor Jenkins Reid book. She's probably one of my favorite authors. I just find her writing style to be so heartfelt and it definitely pulled on my heartstrings tenfold. This was such a huge roller coaster of emotions. I always say if a book is able to make me cry in the end, then it always ends up becoming one of my favorite books. I did not want to put this book down. I was so invested in this story. I needed to know what was going to happen next with these characters. I think that the characters went through such big development during this story. We got to see Emma falling in love with Jesse and then going through complete heartbreak when she loses him to then finding love again with Sam and then having to go through the turmoil of figuring out who she wants to spend the rest of her life with. I think that Emma was just such an amazing character. She had to go through so much shit and she was just so strong. I'm not gonna lie, I was team Sam throughout the entire story. I just thought he was so dotting and caring and just so sweet towards Emma. I wanted her to pick him. The ending was just absolute perfection for me. I sobbed and laughed and smiled throughout the whole thing. I just couldn't get enough of this book. I think I may like this one more than I liked Evelyn, which is saying a lot. I definitely, definitely highly recommend this one if you haven't read it already. Five out of five stars. Probably my favorite Taylor Reid book ever. Next up, I read Bent Heavens by Daniel Cross, and I gave this a 3 out of 5 stars. Two years ago, Liv's father, Lee, went missing after he had a public meltdown about being abducted by aliens. Before going missing, Lee had left a variety of traps in the woods for the aliens that abducted him. Liv and her friend Doug spend every day resetting these traps in the hopes of catching one of the aliens that took her father away. Then they catch an alien and they have to decide whether or not to turn it over to the authorities or try to figure out what happened to Lee. I'm not gonna lie, I was pretty bored throughout this entire story. I just didn't really care. It does pick up a bit at the end, but for the most part, it was a very slow paced book. I didn't really become invested in the book until the last final reveal about the alien came forth. I was honestly going to give this a two star. There is a huge trigger warning in this for body horror. If that is not your thing, do not pick this book up because it is a big chunk of it. I was not a big fan of either of these main characters characters. I think Doug was unhinged and needed to be in some kind of institution. And Liv was just very naive and went along with whatever Doug said at any given point of the story. I did listen to this on an audiobook, which I think definitely did boost my enjoyment of the story. Like I said, I was going to give it a two star, but I did really enjoy the narration. I will say that the ending was very unsatisfying in my opinion, so three stars. The final book that I have to talk about for the month of February 2024 is Cleat Cute by Meryl Wilsner. This is a soccer sapphic romance which I really enjoyed. I gave it a four out of five stars. It follows 26 year old Grace Henderson who has been a star player on the U.S. national soccer team for about 10 years now. When she is benched due to injury she is absolutely devastated. 22 year old Phoebe Matthews ends up taking her place on the team and she has always looked up to Grace as a player. As they spend more time together, they realize that they have an undeniable chemistry. This was such a fun, very, very spicy romance. I absolutely ate up every second of it. It is advertised as a rivals to lovers, but I definitely would not categorize that. I listened to this on audiobook. I think that the narrator did an incredible job with these characters. I loved both of them so much. They were so completely opposite from one another, and it just worked so well for the story. They were both so complex and completely flushed out. I think that they balanced each other out so well. I am not the biggest fan of the miscommunication trope and oftentimes I absolutely despise it, but something about it in this book worked for me, which was a little bit shocking. I related to Grace so strongly as somebody who had a career-ending injury in basketball. I definitely could understand all of the emotions that she was going through and thinking that the sport is the only thing that makes her who she is, so I loved that aspect. At times I do think that the inner monologues became a little bit tedious 
and I kind of wanted them to be shortened or like t a couple of them taken out but overall I did have a lot of fun with this and I give it a four out of five stars. All right everybody so those were all the books that I read in the month of February 2024. If you are interested in part one that is up on my channel now so you guys can go check that out. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!